everyone just a quick one I want to mod this uh, Panasonic 100 to 300 mm and then to fit this uh, two times steadily convert term C20 onto the 100 and to 300 mm so what we do is we need to take out this here so it's very easy to take it out so you just unscrew it it's just a back plate and uh, it's just to keep the the dust or anything going in but it's mainly cosmetic more than anything else it is uh, weather sealed at the rubber here okay to take this out uh, you open this up and then pull this pull, just pull this plas plastic piece out right and then it's open so what you need is to make sure that this is extended right you need to extend it out to the max and then you can fit in this uh, uh, MC20 you follow the points here you can fit it in here exactly as it is that's it and it will work with the camera but you can't turn this back because it will go up to about like 200 180 then you'll get stuck there so if you're transporting this make sure you remember take this thing out don't transport it with this zoom extender. You just take it out when you want to transport it. Right, and then you put back your cap here as usual. Then you can transport it as it is. And when you want to use the tele zoom, you extend it again. And then you put back the MC20 and then lock it in. And then we shall go out and try some. Uh, shots with this uh, 100 to 300 Panasonic lens with the MC20. So, hi, Richard here. Currently out at the. Oh, look at the bees. Beautiful bees all over, right? At the park, testing out the GX9 with the. 100 to 300 mm. So I've already opened the rear so I can put in the MC20 uh, adapter to make it a 600 mm at the max telephoto lens. So let's try this out and I'll switch it over now to the telephoto lens and then we'll try 300 mm shot and then 600 mm after that. The grass grew back and it's great for the ecosystem, right? So but my legs are being cut by the stems from the weeds. There's so many new bugs here today because because of the grass is higher. And look at that blue color butterfly. Okay, great time to test out the zoom lens. Look at this. This is so unique. I've not seen that. Okay, maybe I can macro this first crazy the ecosystem here grew and then now it's flourish with so many uh, beautiful insects uh, I'm gonna try to hopefully get some and here are some mating gu mating guys let's try to get hold of this and uh, it's spinning around, flying around everywhere. Oops, there's a nice big bee there. And he can't decide what he wants to do. Yeah, you know, haven't stopped on any flower, so can't get rid of him. Let's move on. Hopefully, go to a spot where I can start changing to the tele lens. So there's a grasshopper here. And a dragonfly. Right, that's just right inside here. Where am I? That's the dragonfly. Okay, that's the dragonfly. Ok, 
Hey, my, just my luck. Uh, two of them mating uh, at the fence. Okay, there seems to be lots of flies here. So if there's lots of flies, there's probably some dead thing here. I have no idea what's dead here, but I don't want to sit around here. But let's just grab a photo of the flies. Anyway, there's a dragonfly there. So let's zoom it out first to 200. And then let's mount that together. And there it goes. So now I'm effectively at uh, 600 mm. So let's try the dragonfly that's there. <laughs> Next to the... It used to be the B area, right? So... So shutter speed, I think is correct if you put it on aperture priority and let the shutter speed handle by itself with the ISO. Probably better then because it needs to calculate the length of the lens and the stabilization. So you get a better photo. Yep, it looks better. So seems that the dragonfly has been very good staying there, but there's another butterfly here. Maybe I can get hold of it. Oh, but it flew away. Okay, what's interesting with this butterfly is it's flapping its wings and. Uh, That may give a nice photo. Okay, it's good enough. Let's switch it out, and then. So remember, don't turn. You'll get not locked there, and then it hits the MC20. So take it out that way. Turn it off, and then take out the MC20. And then switch it back to your normal tele lens. That's the tele lens. And then let's get that 300 mm shot. A clear example of man teaching. Let's try these at uh, 300 mm. Full maximum with the f5.6. Right, so let's put in the tele lens before he, he goes away and uh, hopefully we can get a nice shot of that. So ISO 800, 640, 800, 800, previously was ISO 250, okay, also 640, so that's the fastest 5.6 and 640, so the ISO is the only one that changed, sharpness seems to be good, 
because we're in a good sun, right? There's a bird there. There we go, okay. There's a booboo. -boo. 600 mm. This is with the MC20. So the ISO does need to bump up highly to get the good shot. And it's ISO 10,000. Can you imagine that? Well, it's doable with this conversion. Just under shaded tree. So you're not going to get good light right under the shaded tree. So definitely you need good light to use this converter with the 100 to 300 mm uh, luckily there was a boo boo for me to test on but definitely if you just use the 300 mm it's going to be much shorter you won't be able to reach it but your ISO definitely will be lower and uh, let's try that's oh out oh, that's a kingfisher oh no that's not a kingfisher that is the heron okay managed to see the heron all the way to the end there eh? Where is it? Yep, next to the plastic container. So there's the hair on. Yeah. So I'm shooting at 600 mm. ISO 2000 because it's good lighting. F5.6 and 640 shutter speed. Uh, so there you have it, just a quick look at the conversion after I've done the 100 to 300 mm, took off the back plate and then installed the MC20 uh, to mount on, thanks to the ability for that to work. So I got 600 mm from the Panasonic 100 to 300 mm lens, and you can see the photos from there, uh, the test shots that I gave at 300 as well as the 600 mm and the 600 mm shots at the end so that's a good way if you just want to convert and you don't want to buy bigger lenses you can use that but you have to use it in good light if else your ISO will bump up to 10,000 but I still think it's better than nothing but you can use that uh, not on a daily basis but on a very bright day so you still get ISO 2000 uh, or below if it's very bright so, that's all so give me a thumbs up if you like this and i'll see you on the next video bye have a nice day